So we talked earlier about um, what it takes to maintain uh, the, the physical needs of, of any professional sport. But in, in your case, I mean, do you have a specific regimen that you do when you're in competition or when you have an event at night, or is it something that you, you do uh, you know, throughout the week? That's well, I mean, I, I, I like to train hard nonstop. Mm -hmm. um, and I get some criticism from that as well because a lot of people ask me, why am I training so hard and risking injuring myself? You know, with the way I train, and it's just my nature. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't lollygag, so mm. to speak. Go big or go home. Yeah, when I go to the yeah. gym, I'm not trying to lift weights just to, for an aesthetic look. I'm trying yeah. to be as big as and strong as I possibly can. So, and I believe that you know we should all do that. Why wouldn't you want to be right? So what I right. do is I, I know I need to look a certain look, but I also want to be strong. Um, I don't want air conditioned muscles. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's I a good need, way to put it. Yeah. I need to be able to work. So I like to, what I call power build. I like to do power building. So I'll have days where I, I'll have light days where I do high repetition, you know, uh, just to focus on the muscle and mm -hmm. the cut and every, everything in between. But then I'll have days, everything's twice a week. And then I'll have a heavy day where I'm going and I'm just, you know, three to five reps, everything, five to ten yeah. sets of, of just massive mm -hmm. amount of weight. Well, really shock massive, the muscles, Massive yeah. for me, yeah. So, mm -hmm. and I do that every week nonstop, rarely without, without a rest day. So, I mean, seven days a week. Seven yeah. days a week, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about? So, and, and, unless I can. I mean, there's times when you can just absolutely cannot. Go right, to right. Or, I mean, if, yeah, if something comes up on a personal note or. Right, or, or, or you got a, filming and you're mm -hmm. working, you know, right. 16, 14 hour day and you got travel and all this. And it becomes just, mental, too, because if, you know, if you get on a, on a routine or, you know, that uh, a regimen and then you miss a day, it almost kicks in the. Yeah, it does. You know, it kicks does. in the guilt almost or, you know. So, I was. When, when the quarantine started, I really picked up, I had nothing to do, obviously. So quarantine started and everybody was locked in their houses and I had access to a gym, my gym, so I can go work out, mm -hmm. so privately. So uh, what I would do is I would do my workouts in the morning and I hate cardio, I don't rarely do cardio, I do a lot of walking, I'll mm -hmm. go walk after my meals and such. Uh, but I said, you know what, I'm gonna push myself and I'm gonna start jogging in the evenings. So I went from, jo I went from doing weights in the morning, and then I started jogging in the evenings. And then I said, oh, well, I still got a lot of free time on my hands. My buddy's here in town, and uh, he's a world champion, multiple-time kickboxer. Mm -hmm. I'll just start training some kickboxing in the middle of the day. So I started doing weights in the morning, kickboxing around lunchtime, and then I would do my jogs in the evenings. Okay, so we were talking earlier about um, nutrition and how that fits in, like abs are made in the kitchen. What about you? How do you handle, uh, you know, the metabolism changing? You know, as you get older, metabolism changes. Do you have, have you had a change in your food plan or? Yeah, it's, it's definitely changed over time. Um, as a young man, I really ate what I wanted and I didn't know anything about diet and nutrition. I didn't start going to the gym. I didn't enter a gym for my first time until I was 25 years old. Kind of intimidating, right? Because you go in, you don't yeah. know anything. I didn't work out. I mean, I didn't, I didn't do workouts. So we did wrestling workouts when I was in high school, mm -hmm. and I was in ninth, tenth grade, eighth grade. I started wrestling in eighth grade, and we did wrestling workouts. And it was, we would go on a levee and we'd run three to six miles, and it was miserable, yeah. right? And it'd be cold. That that were, you know, and then squats and push ups and yeah, lots the of those standard, drills. Yeah, right. not not. I wasn't in the weight room, you know, benching, bench pressing, mm -hmm. and squatting, and deadlifting, and doing all that stuff like a lot of football teams do. So I went to the gym and I started training and I had no idea what I was doing. Like most people when they first entered the gym. Right. It took years for me to catch on and diet eventually came with it. I started following the, uh, I mean, the older I get, the more I learn. I try and learn something new every day. But I picked up the vertical diet from Stan Efferding. And I don't know if you're familiar with it, but the vertical diet is basically a diet, diet designed to make you bigger, stronger, faster. And I follow that along with the, kind of the carnivore diet, which is almost the same thing. It's just carnivore diet is just a lot of red meat. So yeah. it is nothing but red meat. But mm -hmm. I eat a lot of red meat. There's a lot of meals where I only eat a steak, right? And tonight when I go home, I'll be chowing down on a big steak. Yeah. But, protein, um, yeah. right, a lot of protein. But the carnivore, I mean, the, the, the vertical diet is basically red meat, sweet potatoes or white rice, um, Peppers, spinach, carrots, some orange juice, some peer pressed cranberry juice, 
and a little salmon, you know, twice a week. And that's what you eat all day, every day. Or a eggs as well. You know, I'll wake up and I'll usually eat. I don't eat right when I wake up. I go to the gym first. And oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, I go, okay. I go on an empty stomach. I go to the gym first. I train, and then I'll come home, and I usually have like five eggs, maybe a little bacon with some peppers. And, and you, I mean, you eat the yolks too. It's not just. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I eat the yolks too. Um, then a couple hours later, I'll have my first meal, and I, I try to eat about at least five meals a day. During yeah. the quarantine, I slack. I got off, and I'm just being honest for people out there. You know, it's hard to follow a, a regiment 24/7, right. and everybody falls back at some point. I'm human. So during the quarantine, I kind of fell back. I wasn't as active. I said I started doing those workouts, and then I was doing three workouts a day. But at, at the same time, sometimes I wasn't, you know, some days I just wasn't eating. It's hot, or, you know, I'd eat twice a day because it just, I'd be sitting around a lot, and I'm mm -hmm. just not moving around. So I, I would It's a mental there. aspect, it, too. It's a mental, you know, yeah, it's very, it's very. And, right. I, I had dieted for, I had hardcore dieted for six weeks right prior to quarantine. And it kicked in, and I stayed with it for, well, I dieted for a month. And then I stayed with it another two weeks at the quarantine, which was six weeks. And I was prepping for a photo shoot. I was going to do a really nasty photo shoot and just get shredded as I could be. Yeah. And that photo shoot got canceled. So at that point, I kind of just... The motivation went away. The motivation yeah. went away to stop eating because we didn't, we didn't know when everything was going to come back. Right. So I said, well... I'm not just going to kill myself for no reason. I could have, right? But And then the gym workouts changed because you couldn't just go to your regular gym every day. And I said yeah. I had access to my gym, but I didn't have access to everything. Right. I didn't have a squat rack. Uh, so, I, you know, just certain things. There's certain exercises you can't do, and you have to makeshift things and do body weight, body weight workouts and, you know, or, or resistance band workouts. So mm -hmm. they, they just... You adapt. Yes. So yeah. I adapted, and now that we're back and open and up and running again, I just started last week following my diet to a strict T again. Mm -hmm. uh, started working out my regular workouts again. So, and it's good. You know, I mean, I'm back, and I was benching 315 for sets of five today before I came here. So I was doing five sets of five. So you know your body bounced back really quick. Yeah, but, I mean, I didn't I, – like, I was I was probably – a lot higher than that right before I left the gym, close mm -hmm. to 400, not for you five. You lose strength really quick. Right, you'll, right you can yeah. lose strength, but I, I, I kept it up, and, uh, you know, I was probably I, – I, I could bench four or five before the quarantine. Yeah. I can't bench four or five right now. I could probably yeah. get 365, 380, but it's going to take me a little bit to build back up to that four or five again. And I think what, what people uh, – we need to realize is that I mean you're a, a professional athlete and you are you've been training for years and years. So when they are coming up with their own meal plan, you know if it's on their own or or through a uh, through a, a guide of some kind, whether it's a, a therapist, or a nutritionist, or, or something like that, it's got to fit them. You know because Correct. what works for you might not work for me or work for another professional wrestler. It all depends on your metabolism, and you've discovered that over the years. What works for you, right? Yeah, certain things work for certain people. I mean, there's templates. I've I was always been told that the best diet is one that you can stick to. Yeah, that's a good point. So you know, and they all there's they, a lot of them work, right? Some are BS, but for the most right. part, fat mo diets, and so right? Forth, yeah. Most diets work, so it's just you have to follow that that regimen consistently. Mm -hmm. No cheating, like I tell people. They're like, that's that was the, my next question. Cheat day. Well, that's the first yeah. thing people want to do is they, they, you know, I'm not saying I don't cheat. I have a huge sweet tooth. I love cakes. I love mm -hmm. brownies, you know, cookies, so, things of that nature. And I'll tend to cheat a lot if I don't have anything going on. Right. It's not like, I mean, I always have abs. You're never going to see mm -hmm. me at a time where I can't pull up my shirt and not have abs. Yeah. Uh, now, do I still cheat when I have abs? Absolutely. But... When I have a goal that I'm shooting for, like say I want to do a photo shoot, then I know that I have something I want to work towards, mm -hmm. so I have to mentally prep myself not to cheat. Right. And sometimes that's hard. And I find that there's a little cycle that first like two weeks, it's very hard to kick your habits. So if you like mm -hmm. sweets, for me, like that first two weeks is really difficult for me. But once I break that barrier... It's easy. You almost have to not drive by any place that'll have it and well, definitely not have it in the house. Your body just is so used to having it and you mm -hmm. want it and it's a, it's a craving, right? Yeah. It's like doing something that usually, it, it's like, hey, I can go do this every day. I can go to Walmart every day. And then the government says, hey, you can't go to Walmart anymore right, right. now for the next three months. Mm -hmm. So, and everybody's like, wait, I got to go to Walmart. I have That's to right. go to Walmart. <laughs> it's just, it's the same yeah. thing. 
Right. So, uh, but it's, it's all mental, man. And you have to be mentally strong and you have to prepare yourself to put yourself through those tests that you're going to. And it depends on what, what your goals are. You know, some people say, you know what, I want the pizza twice a week. Right, so, right, right, right. So the, the trade off is, okay, I'm not going to have 8% body well, fat well, if I do that a lot. Powerlifting, you know? the goal in powerlifting is generally, you know, to be as big and strong as you can is, is you get as big and strong as you can mm-hmm. by eating as much as you can. You know, you look at Brian Shaw, you look at these powerlifters, these, these world strongmen, and you look at the calories they intake, they're always trying to be as big as they possibly can. Now, uh, again, we'll go back to Brian Shaw, right? Before he was just eating whatever he wanted, half throw, these guys were eating whatever they wanted and just trying to take in as much calories as they can a day. Both of those guys started on a vertical diet now. Mm-hmm. Stan Efferding trains both of them. He trains a lot of the world's top athletes. And they noticed their body fat dropping. They noticed their muscle mass began to produce more. And they noticed they started to get stronger. Mm-hmm. So they started to look better and they started to feel confident. So they started taking their shirts off. And these are big guys. Right. And before they were just kind of, I don't want to say they were fat slobs, but they were just. There was, they were missing the cut. They were missing any cut. Yeah, yeah. you just, it was just big. Right. Just, right. Big guys. So like, and now uh, they're like, man, I like this. I'm feeling better about myself. I'm breathing better. I'm carrying my weight better. Uh, I'm lighter. I'm more muscular. And I'm stronger. And that's all. A testament of a diet, yeah, which is crazy, right? It's all it, 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 the simplest analogy is to say, if you buy a Lamborghini, you're not going to discount zone to put gas in it, right? Right? We're not going to brothers, That's right? To, to put to put get the mm-hmm. cheap gas in a Lamborghini, you're going to put the best fuel possible mm-hmm. in that Lamborghini. You probably going to go to Exxon and Shell and get 93, mm-hmm. right? 93 grade. Uh, and that, and it's the same way with the diet. And and I'm saying, you can do it affordably. A lot of people think a diet is expensive. It's not, but it does take time. Right. Meal prepping, your own yeah, meals. Yeah, the, the planning and the prep. That's that's the big part. That's of it. You where can't, it is. Five minutes before you go to the grocery store is not the time to do it. No, you got to get what you need, and you know you cook for three three days at a time mm-hmm. at least, and you eat the same thing over and over again. Right. And if you need to have a cheat meal, you have to. But it's for me, it's a better testament if you don't have a cheat meal because when you start cheating it kind of shows a sign of weakness and you start fading and well if I did it once maybe mm-hmm. I'll do it again or you get that taste for it if you can just break it off and then go back into it when you're done whatever your goal is right. great and, and some people think okay well if and, and I've seen this work for some people where <laughs> I just need the little I need that half a cookie oh yeah I need that one cookie okay it's Hey, I got look, out of my system. I'm good to go. That's some people, you though. Know, that's but not it everybody. Could also, it could also backfire. Right, and trigger one reaction. One cookie, you're like, well, if I had one. Well, go back to well, the last dance, right? Mm-hmm. I was just talking about the ESPN documentary with Michael mm-hmm. Jordan and the Bulls. Michael Jordan's the hardest worker on the team, this guy's work. And then there's Dennis Rodman, who, like, to get the best performance out of him, you had to let him go party and do right. whatever the hell he wanted yeah. to do. But when he came on the court, it was all business, and he was putting the work mm-hmm. in, and he didn't miss a beat. But in order for him to perform so well, he had to be himself, yeah. and he had to go do yeah, things. Yeah, what, what, what's going to work for this person right. may not and probably won't work for somebody else. Right, because they'll get derailed. They'll go off the, mm-hmm. you know, off the tracks, and yeah. then you know, they're drinking every day and all day, mm-hmm. and they, you know, that's more important than going to work. I remember watching uh, a Lawrence Taylor special, and if, if you guys don't know who Lawrence Taylor is, we got some problems. You need to go <laughs> look up YouTube. But Lawrence Taylor would say, I know we're on uh, YouTube now, but Lawrence Taylor would say he played football so well because all he was thinking about was doing cocaine when he got off the field. He wanted to get the game over with so he can go get mm-hmm. some cocaine, <laughs> right? Now, how many players did, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, backward motivation. but yeah. Right, it's backward motivation, yeah. but that's that, this one freak of nature, that's what he was doing right. and partying. Not, I'm not in any way advising people to go do that. That's not it. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But it's just crazy. Sometimes Mm -hmm. you have these freak of nature. It goes back to like the sugar thing. You want a cheat meal on a Sunday. Right. So if he wants a cheat meal on a Sunday, let him have a cheat meal on a Sunday. If if that's what makes you happy and you can Mm -hmm. still get your progress. um, Again, uh, I'll go back. I'll just refer back to another guy, Michael B. Jordan, the actor. I just watched when he was training for Creed. Mm -hmm. And he said that he has a cheat meal every day. Every meal he eats throughout the day is clean but he'll have a slice of pizza or something during the day too because everything else he puts in his body is clean. And that might not work for everybody. Right. 
but it works for him. And he's still lean. He's yeah, still and he's discovered that legs. his metabolism allows for him to do that. Right. Or somebody else with a slower metabolism or it might just can't throw process it white carbs or something. Right. Throw the whole thing off. And, and, and you really know, right? I mean, there's heavy people that are overweight and obese. I mean, obviously, you, if you're obese, you don't want to have that slice of pizza. You want to get to your goal. Now, if you're skinny and, and you know, you can't put weight on, you want to eat as much as you can yeah. to try yeah. and put the weight on. Everybody's got a different metabolism. Everybody's body reacts differently, and everybody has different problems. Right. But the, the bottom line is, is you need to lay out your goal, and you need to go after that goal by any means necessary. And that means if that means not having a cheat meal, if that means doing two workouts a day, if that means incorporating cardio or not incorporating cardio. You know, obviously I talked to a guy a few days ago. And he was really lean. He was 6'3", and he was 170 pounds. And he said, I'm trying to put on weight and muscle. I need to put on weight and muscle. And then he proceeded to tell me that he runs six miles a day. And I said, well, if you're running six miles a day and you're trying to put on weight and muscle, yeah. You're contradicting everything right. you want to do because you're burning everything off. So, so it's a trade-off. It's a you trade-off. Gotta, you got to decide what you want to do. Right, exactly. exactly. What makes you feel better, you know? I mean, I, someone had told me one time when I first started training that the, the um, cause I said I wanted to put it because I had always had trouble putting on weight. Always had trouble. I mean, I graduated high school. I was 120 pounds, you know? And um, my first day at the, at the gym, the now defunct Gold's Gym, you know, the guy said, the, the lean guys want to put on mass. The big guys want to get lean. You yep. know, he said it's very rare that you find the person that's right in the middle. And if you do have that, the work is incredible. I'm just trying to win a lottery. To, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm not focused on either one. I just want to win a lottery. I've been buying Powerball tickets left and right. And <laughs> yeah. So I can just give up on life. <laughs> Louisiana lottery. Your odds are a lot better winning, by the way. Is it really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like a one in a million as opposed well, to one it, in It's all the same million. lottery, though. No. Yeah, they all come from the same pot. All the well, the Powerball, the Powerball. Yeah, I'm talking about yeah, Powerball. Oh, so you're actually talking. I'm talking about Louisiana Lotto. I don't even see that. You just no. see the Mega Millions and the Powerball. I guess you got a specific. Yeah, I stopped. I, I stopped playing. I was like, I can't. I, I'm just throwing money out the window. Yeah, but, uh, well. All right. So tell us about Wildcat. Wildcat Sports, the greatest professional wrestling company, not only in the South but one of the greatest in the United States of America. We are the number one pro professional wrestling training center and live wrestling events in the South. Uh, if you've seen our Punch Train show, Punch Train Center show from November, you've seen that we drew a little over 2,200 people, mm -hmm. which was one of the biggest independent events outside of the, you know, and I, what I say is independent. Most people don't realize if you're not a wrestling fan, independent wrestling is outside of WWE. Mm -hmm. and it's anything pretty much outside of WWE. We're an independent company. Everything's financed locally uh, through Wildcat Sports. We don't have any big corporate sponsors. Not that we don't want any, so come on. <laughs> no, but I mean, everything's done. You know, it's a mom and pop company. We started in 2011, and we started in a bar room, and we started drawing around 200 people with our first shows. That quick, quickly drew out of there, and we started drawing around 500, then it went to six, then it went to seven, then it went to eight. And uh, we consistently draw 1,000 people or more on a regular basis at all our live events. And we just had our eight-year anniversary back in November at the Ponce Train Center, where was my first I attended my first wrestling show in 1992 at. So it was always a goal of mine to run the Ponce Train Center and run it successfully, mm -hmm. and we did. So uh, we drew over 2,000 people, which was amazing. And for me, that was like the cream of the crop, man, because I was so nervous going into it, and it was the biggest show of all time, and I had a lot of money tied up into it because people don't realize how much these events cost. Events are very expensive, and our tickets, you know, here in Louisiana, our tickets are priced for Louisiana, to yeah. be honest. Um, you go a lot of other places, like you go to the Northeast, you go to Los Angeles, you go to Philadelphia, where I wrestle at regularly, and a general admission ticket is the cost of our front row tickets, or more. Right. I mean, general admission tickets is anywhere from 25 to $50 in those places for an independent wrestling show. Mm -hmm. So uh, here I always try and make it affordable for Louisiana. Our, our tickets usually start around 12 bucks. And, but, 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 and you know, obviously we have more higher ones. Yeah. But we run regularly. We do about six to eight shows every year, usually about every eight weeks spread out in Louisiana, we'll, we'll run multiple places. We've run Georgia, we've run Texas, we've run um, Philadelphia, like I said, Mexico, San Diego, different places. And we're still growing. So we have a television show with w WPL, the contracts with WWL mm -hmm. Television. 
and we've been on that for three years. We just finished our uh, third season, and we're gearing up for our fourth season now. So once this corona lets up and we can run some more live events, we'll be on it. But yeah, I was going to ask you that. So do you think uh, – Wrestling events without audience is something that might happen? I, I you know, I don't think so. I, I've thought about it, but I'd really, if I have to come to that, I would. But the truth is, I don't know how that would be possible for us because all our profits and everything that keeps us running is live events and, mm-hmm. and you know. Merchandising and concessions. and Well, the T-shirts and, right. and, and you know, and, and just, you know, people buying tickets, fans buying tickets. Right. So, yeah. And how can I pay guys if I don't have somebody supporting and buying right, a ticket? Exactly, without without huge sponsorship. Right, exactly. You know? Without a and, and then even then, I mean, a lot of the, I mean, they're performers as well as professional athletes. You know, professional wrestlers, and they, they feed off the we energy feed off of the, the crowd. Energy of the crowd you know? Definitely, one hundred percent. And so they, it would lose something. Yeah, and and wrestling's one of those things where, like you said, we feed off the crowd, but. The crowd, the emotion from the crowd is what makes us tick and what's, mm-hmm. what's involved in everything because if I'm a bad guy, I'm counting on you to boo me. Right. And the things I'm going to do are going to do things to make you hate me. So if there's nobody in the audience to hate me, it gives me no motivation to do these dastardly mm-hmm. things to someone and get a reaction. Right, because you can't tell if people's reacting to you off TV. Yeah, it feeds on the audience, now, definitely. Now, now, I mean, but to go back. We talked about acting, right? There's no live audience if we're performing a scene. If you're Brad Pitt right. and you're doing a, some devious act on a movie screen, there's no audience. But again, these guys aren't trained actors for the most part. They didn't do mm-hmm. theater. They didn't do any of that. You know, they, they're, they're professional wrestling, so they want to react from your reaction. Mm-hmm. They want to come out and have you either cheer me or boo right. me, and then I'm going to react accordingly. I'm either going to hype you up or I'm going to try and upset you even more. So I, I don't know where we go from here. I have high hopes that we'll be back soon over the summer, and I'm gearing up to be back during the summer. We actually have a show scheduled for June 27th. I don't mm-hmm. personally think it's going to happen now, but I had it scheduled since last year, so I yeah. announced it. And it's one of our bigger shows. It's called X-Rated because it's a 21 and up show. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's adults only show. We have one of those a year. It's at a bar called Shamrock in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that show is pretty wild. All our shows are family friendly except this one show. This is where everybody lets loose at. And we curse and there's alcohol. There's only not alcohol at our event. So this one, this is like. It's the, a debauchery version. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this is the parents' favorite show. The mm-hmm. parents are like. Hey man, when's extra? <laughs> yeah, the kids. When's Send the kids home. Yeah, yeah, send yeah. Them to the babysitter. Exactly. And, yeah, so, yeah, uh, so because they not only do they want to get wild and rowdy, they want to party with the wrestlers. Yeah, yeah. So it's their time to do that. Right. Yeah. So um, we've we've actually had to cancel two shows since the the virus, but uh, I think we're not going to cancel this one. I think we'll postpone it. Mm-hmm. If uh, and I'll know in the next week, around June first mm-hmm. is when I'm expecting to see what the city opens up as because yeah. shamrock's already open but it's opened up at 25 percent capacity and i think people are still a little hesitant to go yeah, out a little leery right now right so i might as well do what's best for mm-hmm. the company and i'm gonna say that straight up i'm gonna do what's best for the company because if i don't think we can pull a crowd due to this i'm not in the business to lose money right you know i, I don't want to go bankrupt trying to put on an event I, right. what i want if you do can is, just wait a couple months and, right. and have the event that you want to have right? exactly why not right. so that we're we're looking into that now and we're setting up everything okay. to push it all further if need be so right. uh but to answer your question man yeah we need a crowd so yeah. okay. i'm hoping we can get back in action real soon all right well we wish you the best of luck and thank you so much for joining this has been great yeah thanks for having all us right. and uh if anybody wants to check me out online uh, we have all social media, so Wildcat, if you want to look up Wildcat Wrestling, it's W-I-L-D-K-A-T, Wildcat Sports, okay. Cat with a K, right here, you can see yep. it right here. Everything's at Wildcat Sports, we have Facebook, we have t- Twitter, we have Instagram. Uh, if you want to look me up personally, it's at Luke Hawks 504 L-U-K-E-H-A-W-X, that's at Luke Hawks 504 Again, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that, and you can check me out, check my son PJ Hawks out, you'll see us doing the father-son yep. tag team, the Hawks, everything which is cool, and you can check out all my films. You know, you can check out Fast 8, Fast and Furious 8, Fate of the Furious, Logan. You can check uh, them out on imdb.com. IMDb, IMDb, yeah, so check out yep. all that stuff. Not Let's everything's list. listed on there, but there's, okay. a, lot, there's a lot of films that yeah. are listed, you know, probably 40, 40 or 50 of that are listed on there. And then 
I hope everybody's safe, and I appreciate y'all having me on. All right, man. Thanks a lot. And don't forget to check out Mission Fitness on our social media as well. And um, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.